Good morning, everyone. Uh, on the behalf of uh, Irish Pakistani Professional Association, uh, Muhammad Mukhtar is my name. I'm the consultant and ESRIS. And we are the uh, two people who is leading the IPAMED, uh, me and Dr. Mustafa. So just a brief introduction of the uh, IPA. IPA is a registered organization which is established in September 2018. It had its first inauguration in, on 23rd of March, uh, 2019. And it had over 450 members and 85% are the medical professionals, consultants and NCHDs. And so we uh, divided IPA into the uh, two groups for the operational reasons, IPA Tech and IPA Med. And today, I welcome you all on the anesthesiology webinar uh, on the behalf of IPAMED. Now I'm going to hand over to my uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Mustafa, who is a consultant in the accident and emergency St. James's Hospital, and he will uh, lead to the rest of the webinar. Handing over to Mustafa. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mukhtar, uh, for uh, holding this and organizing this wonderful webinar. Uh, and thank you for all the wonderful participants for coming and joining us for this very important webinar. Um, essentially, this uh, IPA Med is, I, I co-lead IPA Med with uh, Professor Mukhtar. I'm consultant in emergency medicine. And uh, the aims of uh, IPA Med is to facilitate Pakistani, doc facilitate non-European doctors in uh, Ireland with their career progression in various specialties. And we have been organizing various webinars based on uh, general practice, emergency medicine, research, CV writing. And as a part of our series of webinars, uh, this is our anesthesiology webinar. And to progress to a specialist register uh, or is looking for a change of scenery has been working in a different specialty for a long time and think that anesthesiology is the way that where they want to go this is an absolute must we have a very brilliant a fascinating lineup of speakers uh, for you and this webinar for anyone who's interested in anesthesiology particularly working in anesthesiology in ireland this webinar is an absolute treat uh, what I would ask all the participants is uh, if you can please uh, ask your questions in the chat box. We will not be answering them live while the speakers are giving their talks. We will try to address all of your queries at the end of it. We might answer in the chat box or we might take all the questions at the very end so that uh, our um, speakers are not interrupted. We have got a very, very tight time capsule to follow through. So after that introduction, I am going to introduce our first speaker of the day. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to welcome Dr. Etasham Khan. Uh, Dr. Etasham Khan is a consultant anesthesiologist. He is the past vice president of the College of Anesthetists of Ireland, College of Anesthesiology in uh, Ireland. He is currently the chair of credentialing committee of College of Anesthesiology in Ireland as well. And he is also a council member of College of Anesthesiology. And his talk is filled with information uh, that you will never find, not find anywhere else. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Isham Khan. Over to you. Uh, thank you, um, Mustafa, for this. And I'll just start before I'll start. Okay. And... Okay, I can start from the beginning now. That's fine. Thank you, Mustafa, and thank you, Mukhtar. And hopefully this uh, and my, um, my talk will be helpful for a lot of doctors who are coming to Ireland, not only from Pakistan, but subcontinent and a lot of Middle East doctors as well. Now, the time period which has been given to me, hopefully I'll try and do justice with this huge topic to cover within 20, 25 minutes. But if there are any questions, uh, you can put it in the chat box and we'll see we'll be able to answer during this session or maybe sometime later. But it's a big topic to cover and I'll see what I can do in the uh, allotted time. So, <clears throat> as you know, uh, the way we are governed by this uh, credentialing process is through our uh, legislation. 
and Section 47 of the Medical Practitioners Act covered this. And there are rules made around this uh, credentialing process. And there is also uh, the EU directive uh, in 2005, which particularly looks into this area of recognition of uh, evidence of training, and which wasn't the case before that. So this allows the uh, each medical council to look into how exactly the training, other than the uh, regular training, or what you call it, the college training program, how doctors can be uh, inducted into the uh, specialist registration. So, uh, <clears throat> so there is a service level agreement as well. The medical council, what it does, it uh, between the four or five colleges in Ireland, like surgeons and physicians, uh, and also anesthesiology, they have got a service level agreement uh, with us. And it's through that we process, uh, we look into this whole uh, uh, credentialing process. Uh, so <clears throat> by that, we just are covered by the uh, medical council. So I just quickly give you the overview of the process, what exactly happens. And just let you know, the college never uh, directly involves or discuss these issues with the candidates themselves. So whatever are the issues or whatever the direction is, uh, the candidate should contact the medical council. And medical council, if there are any issues, they'll come back to us and we'll respond. So the college doesn't get involved or does, doesn't talk to the uh, individual uh, candidates. So that's what exactly it is. So we are just a sort of a authority totally separate from the um, medical council. So we don't get involved uh, in direct uh, consultation with the candidates. So what exactly how it, how it happens, <clears throat> the medical council has got its own guidance document. What I would advise the candidates while they are doing their training should get these guidance documents from the medical council and go through this medical. It's a very, very comprehensive document. So you go through this document. Once you apply to the medical council to go on to a specialist register, medical council looks your documents. They do all their due diligence, your degree, your certificate, your exam, everything. It's medical council's responsibility. And once they are happy, all the documents are verified and all correct, then at that level, at that point, they send it to the college. Now, once the college receives that uh, document or that um, um, credentialing application from a candidate, then at that point, we have got 10 weeks to respond back to the medical council. So when the application comes, we have got a secretary, she looks after, and she then sends this application not only for anesthesiology, but also for intensive care medicine as well. It comes to me and myself. We, I then look into, and then we assign to two assessors. Uh, and there are two independent assessors. We send the uh, uh, application to them. And then once, and the assessor has also got a very, very defined template for which they have to assess the candidate. So they have got four weeks to respond. And within that four weeks, the assessors come back to the, the send their um, report to the college. And when it comes to the college, then it comes to myself. I look into those two independent assessors report. And if they are in line with what exactly we have and what and requirements are completed, and which is most of the time the case. So we just send that and we design, uh, the, we, we write the uh, report and we send it to the medical council. And at that time, whatever the deficiencies are or whatever we need to do the candidates, it's been um, like medical council informs the candidate at that level. Mm -hmm. So then they know and then it's a process. So that's the whole process, how exactly um, uh, we go through. Now, I'll go through the thing. If you have to look into the whole process, if you do go into the college website and uh, enter, uh, this is the uh, link there. And I have all the details of how to go into a specialist register is also there as well. So the first thing, if you look into when somebody applies to, um, to go into a credentialing um, route is a fellowship, an exam. So that is the uh, evidence of knowledge, which we would like at present, if you can see these are the college uh, or these are the exams, which we accept towards our uh, credentialing process. And these are five exams, College of Anesthesiology, uh, Royal College of Anesthetics exam as well, American Board, 
New Zealand or Australia exam, uh, South Africa and the Canadian anesthesia exam. Now we keep on reviewing these exams as well. It's not uh, written on the stone, and but for the last couple of years, these are the um, college exams which we recognize. So that's the first hurdle or that's the first step which if somebody's applying, we need an examination to know whether the, the knowledge base is there. So <clears throat> after this, this uh, second step starts, the duration of training. As you all know, in Ireland, the training for anesthesia is six years training. And um, what we would like, anybody who is applying to the, um, going to a credentialing or to go to a special register should slight or um, try to mirror as much as possible to the uh, requirement of the college. So initially, as you doctors who have come here, I think uh, we have been here for not long, but it used to be a SHO or a basic specialist training, which now the college have trained and uh, changed and it's all six year training scheme. And, but still in Ireland, when the doctors go and they are working, they're working either as an SHO or a registrar. So what we would like two years of that as a basic specialist training and four years at a higher level. But now it's all merged into one training program. So, but what we what we are looking for is six years in anesthesia. So, how exactly uh, that duration of training could be divided? In Ireland, uh, I'm not. I think maybe some lot of doctors here may are mostly are from Ireland, but there may be some doctors uh, attending this course from uh, other countries as well. Uh, we have got. To, different models of hospital, model four, model three, model two. Only model three and model four hospitals in Ireland are recognized for anesthesia training. So, and the college send their the candidates or their trainees to these two types of hospital, model three and model four hospitals. And what we would like, uh, because it's a national training scheme, we don't want the doctors to complete all their training in model four or all their model two hospitals. It cannot, uh, even in model two, it, you cannot complete your whole training because there are a few modules. They are only available in model four hospitals, but we would like the training to be reflective of all model two and model three hospitals. So, and also recently uh, we have allowed one year of training outside of Ireland as well. Before that, we only would allow training in Ireland. And the reason for that is it's very hard for me to go and know the quality of training in India, Pakistan, Egypt, or any other countries, or what exactly, it could be very good, um, or it may not be up to the par of uh, the training hospitals, which we have got. But in Ireland, we know how exactly, and same thing with England, Canada, or Australia, because it's a similar sort of a training structure. We know if somebody is working in those hospitals, but those hospitals should be recognized for training in those relevant uh, country as well. For instance, if it's in England or in Canada or Australia, there should be a recognized training hospitals. So I won't go into detail. And uh, this is also available on the college website, which hospital is recognized for what level of training and the maximum duration you can spend on each. So a lot of candidates who I have done three years, four years know what we would like two years and max to a one hospital. On some occasions, we do allow another six months, and in a very, very rare instance, another another a year. So that means maximum you can do is three years in a hospital, but we would prefer two years max in one hospital. But on occasions we do allow, depending upon if somebody is doing a fellowship there or some other uh, courses. So we do allow six months or max sometime in a rare cases here as well. But this is available on the college website where exactly. Now, another thing what I would say to the college uh, or people, doctor, doctors looking to go into a specialist register. There are some hospitals in Ireland, they are not recognized for training. And so before you go to those hospitals and apply, make sure those hospitals are recognized for training. Uh, another thing is what after the training of six years, we are looking for few modular training. Now, just at that point, I would like to let know the candidates who are in the process of completing their requirements. The college last year have changed, have come up with a new e-curriculum and it's a live document, which things are, keep on changing as well, but it's a live document. And all those competencies have to be signed off as you do your training. And at this very minute, the candidates who are applying to go into a special register in anesthesia, 
uh, are not assessed as the college candidates because it's recent, recently have started. But I think by 2023, that uh, new that, that new curriculum will kick in. And we would also would like the candidates who are applying to go on to a specialist register to follow the same, uh, same process. And in that, they have got the um, um, uh, an app where anything which are on a, go on to a computer as well, any, uh, for, for instance, they do a central line, they anesthetize ASA three or a four patient, they just record that and it has to be signed off. So that is uh, the process which we have uh, started for the SAT trainees as well. So other than that, there are a few modules we are looking for. Uh, intensive care, it's a six months, two, two modules, and this can be done uh, in lab model two or model three hospitals. Cardiothoracic, a one month module, Obstetric is three month module with six months on call. Neuroanesthesia, one month in neuro, two months in pain. And pediatric, it's six months. It used to be uh, three months, but it's a six months module. So make sure when you are applying, you have got these and make sure you complete these uh, modules in a recognized training hospital. Some are not recognized. You may do obstetric in some hospitals in Ireland, but they are not recognized for um, obstetric anesthesia module. <clears throat> now, as I said, we recently have got the new curriculum that only came in last year, and there will be a con continuous assessment and the candidates doing, for instance, they are, they are doing a vascular anesthesia and they are putting different lines, they're different uh, anesthesia of, uh, specialties like ENT or regional, they can keep on getting those uh, procedures signed off as while they are doing it and they can record on the app as well. But these are the competencies which we are looking for to get these things signed off as well while they are completing. Now, at this point, I would also advise the candidates, they should get that uh, application pack from the medical council quite early. Because if you do this thing at the end of your six years, it's very hard if you send it back to the one which you have completed first year of your requirement and ask the consultant to sign you off or give a reference at that point, it's very difficult. So it's much better and it is advisable to have your uh, that pack with you, the hospital where you complete six months or a year, get yourself that assessed and get your reference, structured reference done. So these are the hospitals where different specialities, again, I would, you can go onto the college website, it's available which hospital is recognized for what module or which competency, what which competency can be signed off. In training, this is again in the new anesthesia curriculum, uh, which you can go. We will be looking in for directly observe procedures, work-based assessments. This is a new thing that has come up, and this has been there for the last uh, two, two years. But going forward, the candidates who will be applying in 2003 or 2023 we will be looking in, uh, have they done that many directly observed procedure skills? Have they got that much of a work-based assessments and have done the case discussions for instance, hypertension or diabetes? So this is new thing coming up. Candidates at present, it's a sort of um, a overlap area, time 2022 and 2022, but going forward in 2023, we would like all applications to be followed as the SAT trainees does and these uh, end training assessments. Now, after exam, then the uh, training, what modules, there are a few courses we would like There are mandatory courses, airway management is mandatory, vascular access course is mandatory, and professionalism for independent practice. This is also in a course, which is a mandatory course. Uh, during the pandemic, we did allow some leeway through for airway management and, and vascular access if somebody has done from some other country, and if it is matches the College of Anesthesiology in Ireland's uh, training structure or that same course is equivalent. We, get, we have given it, but going forward, we would like these courses to be done in the college or uh, as been done. And now more and more um, sites are available. For instance, vascular access, it used to be in Dublin, now Cork and Galway as well have started doing these courses and matter as well. So we would like all these courses, these are mandatory courses. Then there are a few simulation courses. The college trainee do all these uh, 10 to 12 courses in the college. And we at present haven't got that many facility or that, that many courses available for non-SAT trainees. So at present, the rule is we would like at least five, but going forward, when it comes to 2023, and we will be able to do more simulation courses, we would like the candidates to do uh, as many courses as the college trainee does. 
do. But at present, we are happy if anybody, uh, if a candidate has done five courses, we will consider towards the uh, specialist uh, registration. Now, one another part of the training requirement is a senior registrar on call. It, you, we used to call it third on call, but in other countries, it's a senior registrar call. And what we are looking for is 18 months of a senior registrar on call. And that's again is only available in model four hospital. And that should be done after your exam. It cannot be done like say, before your fine fellowship. So that's one thing people say, oh, doctors have come, we have already done third on call and we, they also get signed off. But when we look into their exam, their exam was done uh, after and they have been doing this thing. So it is after the post fellowship exam. And what does senior registrar or means when you're on call, you're supervising two junior uh, registrars or trainees. They could be an ICU obstetrics or a, a, a theater. And, this, and the hospitals where this is uh, allowed or where there is a senior registrar call allowed, where there are two consultants on call as well, so one covering the intensive care and one covering the uh, theater. So that's what exactly senior registrar on call means. <clears throat> so if you look into the guidance pack or uh, when you are looking the structured reference, uh, what we are looking for, it is similar practice or similar sort of uh, qualities in a doctor when uh, we recommend them to go on to a specialist with just senior clinical skills. What that means is a doctor or who is applying are able to put in central lines and do arterial lines and do um, intubation. So these are all cl cl uh, clinical skills, senior clinical skills, which you and do regional anesthesia. They are able to do that. And in the uh, structured reference, these are all boxes have to be ticked or signed off by the consultants. Senior administrative skills, while a doctor is working, make sure the doctors do try and take uh, over the rota if possible, or do some other administrative skills. Try and do uh, as much as possible, get your uh, whoever is the lead in that hospital to take some administrative jobs. <clears throat> Looking after the uh, rota is one of them, or developing few new things uh, in that hospital. So do try and take administrative skills. We are looking whether if we are recommending somebody to go on to a specialist register, they have got these administrative uh, skills as well. And also senior academic skills, you are able to uh, do an audit and you also have to have done any uh, research if possible, it's not mandatory, but you are able to critique any article. And so the, we are also looking for these academic skills as well. So while you are working in a hospital, uh, what I have seen, a lot of candidates who are not from Ireland, they are from subcontinent, Middle East, they don't put much effort in that area, but we are looking uh, in that area as well, whether they have done audit, they have done presentation, they have done grand rounds, they have attended meetings. So these are the all senior uh, academic skills we are also looking. And in the guidance pack and also in the structured reference form, these are details are all there. Now, experience not given credit in terms of assessment. If anything is done prior to their formal training, and uh, if somebody has done any, like say a GP or work in another speciality, we don't give any consideration. And if the training is done in some hospitals, I've already mentioned if they are not training hospital or in the absence of formal training, we don't in a private hospital capacity, unsupervised of a junior responsibility, so these things we don't uh, consider towards our um, credit towards the uh, training. Um, we don't consider any locum post tax duration of less than three months and has to be, a, as I've already mentioned, has to be a college training hospital. The structured reference. Now, these are the eight domains. If you look into the medical council, what are the domains of uh, they're looking into? But uh, while you are working, and if you have got that pack from the medical council quite early, you will look into what we are looking into. So while you are working in the hospitals, make sure these eight areas are nicely covered in your, while you're working in the hospital. We are all looking for these skills or these uh, in your uh, application when you're applying to the college to go into a specialist register. So again, as I've mentioned, these are the areas of professional competence. You are involved in seminars, lectures, if possible, a publication. That's not mandatory, but we'll see. Audit, uh, that's also a requirement for the medical council as well. 
So you are involved in these things. You are involved in teaching. You are giving lectures, not only to the juniors, but also to the nurses and allied health professionals. So when it comes to the assessors, once the application comes, what the assessors do? They look into your application. And if there are any deficit in terms of the exam, training, courses, any of those, they will clearly write it down to the college credentialing committee. These are the deficits. And they will also identify how exactly they could be remedified and how they can be looked into further. If they have to do another year, they have to do a module, they have to do some anything, any, uh, any area that's been deficient, we do clearly recommend how exactly that could be identified. So if you see from the medical council, the application pack that they send to you, they are separated as well. It's very nicely designed uh, document where you keep on, if you have that document quite early in your uh, training or while you're working in the hospital, you keep on putting your documents as they come into those separators. And that will help you structure your uh, application. So that's what exactly I would say to the doctors. And that is the checklist which I have got when the application comes, either it is from the intensive care, uh, specialist registration or the College of Anesthesiology. I have got this thing as well before I send it to the uh, assessors. And when it comes back, whether at least these things are uh, covered. And I think uh, the candidates who are going to apply to go into a special register should look into, they have got a structured reference. One thing I just wanted to mention, we are looking for minimum of five structured references, but also uh, sometimes because in Ireland, you can easily for six years, you can even be working for 12 hospitals, six, six months. So whatever hospital you are looking or whatever training you're looking to be recognized or considered should have a structured reference. Also, as you know, we have allowed one year out of Ireland as well. If somebody has done an FCPS, and that's a fellowship from Pakistan or have done a European diploma of anesthesiology or a diploma from Caribbean. If somebody has done, we do consider one year as the, and the reason for that is because when FCP somebody has done or a European diploma have uh, passed, their, and they applied to do uh, FRCA, we do consider their three years. So we have given a year for that. And, but we need a structured reference from that hospital where they have worked and they have done all these simulation courses. So thank you. And that's me. Sorry if I have taken a bit more time. Uh, it's a big topic to cover as soon as possible in a quick time. Any questions I'm happy to take at the end. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khan. It was a brilliant presentation. So much information and such an important vital information which um, none of the doctors, whether in uh, Ireland or outside of Ireland, would have easy access to. Thank you so much. It, it was just amazing. Being an emergency physician and not being someone who would have interest in anesthesiology, hardcore anesthesiology, I've learned so much from this presentation um, that uh, this is just, just an amazing resource. So the next speaker that we have is Dr. Vakas Rahman. Uh, Dr. Vakas Rahman is... Uh, what is amazing about Dr. Vakas Rahman is that he came from Pakistan and he completed the specialist registration through an alternative pathway, which a lot of people have a lot of questions about that, how to get there and, and how to do that. Uh, so uh, Vakas uh, is currently a fellow in uh, hepatology and physiology and hepatology in St. Vincent's Hospital. Uh, and uh, he has completed a specialist registration via alternative pathway. So he's going to take us through his journey that how did he come all the way onto the specialist register. Vakas, over to you and thanks once again. And Dr. Vakas, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks, Mustafa, and thanks, uh, IPPA, for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, share my experience. Uh, and I'm very really grateful to the mentors, Dr. Mukhtar, Dr. Itsham, that, you know, who've given us an opportunity to talk on this forum, uh, and an IP, IPPA as well. Uh, <clears throat> so I think the crust of the talk is done by Dr. Itsham, and I think, and that's how the structured approach of making an application to the uh, uh, to, to the College of Anesthetists uh, to getting uh, 
your specialist registration. I think when Dr. Mukhtar asked me to do this talk and I, I just thought that maybe rather than talking about the method because I think the, uh, Dr. Sham has comprehensively explained the whole process. But I think uh, there are some hiccups and uh, obviously at our stage, uh, there are certain uh, obstacles that we have to overcome. So I'm just gonna talk about these and uh, it's just gonna be a very short talk and I'm more than happy to answer questions in that. Thank you. So, so uh, the first thing is that, you know, training post versus the parallel scheme. So I think uh, having been suffered all the, uh, all through that, you know, for the last couple, I would say, uh, I would say almost five, six years, I would say that I still would advise the trainees who are coming in uh, from subcontinent or whatever part of the world to Ireland. Uh, I think, training post is still preferably the best route to achieve your specialist registration. So I think that always, always people should aim on getting onto the training post and there's no harm trying. I know it's difficult. Some people would say it's impossible, but I think still being on a training post is preferably the best way to do this specialist registration stuff. Now, if you're not able to do it, obviously, then there's a route available but could be long, could be difficult and uh, doable, but not easy. But we're gonna talk about, I think, uh, uh, the little obstacles that you may come across during that journey. So the first step, I think that Dr. Sham has elaborated, I think if you don't have an exam, you don't have any standing in this. So I think I would advise that whosoever come into the country and I think their first, priority should be their exams, get your exams done and get onto some kind of formal or informal training route to achieve what you are here to intend it. Uh, then the third thing, I, I think that uh, especially for the uh, people going for parallel schemes, the choice of hospitals. And I think Dr. Sham has given a detail uh, regarding the choice of hospitals that people have to make. In my experience, I think if you're working in Dublin, you really have to be very careful in terms of what hospitals you go, because if you intend to go to a hospital, you have to have in your mind that what module you're gonna be signed off in this hospital. So there are certain hospitals in Dublin which have a kind of advantage in which you could get through many, many things. Like I'll give you an example of James's hospital where you can get yourself signed off in most of the modules. And it's very easy to get into the Coombe Hospital if you're working in James's, or if you're working in the Coombs, you can easily get into James's because the same group of consultants working between the both hospitals. Same is for the Matter and Rotunda. And then there are some satellite hospitals. If you're finding hard to get job in big hospitals in Dublin, you can first get into the smaller group hospitals, like for Vincent's, you can get into Holly Street and Ionier Hospital. And there is a way that the consultants work between the both hospitals and it would be easy for you to get into the big hospitals through these satellite hospitals. And most of these satellite hospitals, which are apparently attached to these university hospitals are still recognized for at least six months training. Uh, the other thing would be, I would say that the plan for rotations is very important because you have to have a, a, a certain plan that to go about it because once you do your exams, uh, one of the one of the problems is the most of the trainees. There's no point going haphazard. You need to go like I'm going into this hospital. I'm going to be signed off my third on, but what other modules I can be signed off in this hospital? So this is very important. Uh, as Dr. Sham has elaborated that you knew you need at least 18 months of senior reg on call, <clears throat> and. Uh, now, what I'm seeing is that most people are finding it hard to get sometimes the senior reg on call. Uh, so you have to really be plan your plan, be planning your uh, choice of hospitals in a way where you could just get these things signed off because there's some hospitals would 
would not allow that, you know, uh, because their own trainees are waiting to do the senior reg on call. So it's kind of sometimes difficult. It's doable, as I said, but, you know, if you, if you have a good planning, you know, you'll get there. Uh, <clears throat> there could be disappointments uh, on in this journey. And I think like uh, any other, uh, any other uh, path that you achieve in life, I think, uh, but it's doable. Uh, and I think don't lose, uh, don't lose your heart. That's the most important thing. Uh, there's another, some socially bound issues, especially people coming in in Dublin. Most of the, I know that the uh, tertiary care hospitals on which the senior Raj on call is recognized, but there are some hospitals outside Dublin, like Galway and Cork, where you could still do your senior Raj on call and college would accept that. So it's not just Dublin that, you know, there are hospitals outside Dublin where most of your work could be, you know, recognized by the college. Uh, there are, I've seen in my experience that there's some non-EU uh, trainees coming in to Ireland and they want to pursue the route for special registration, but they would stay in some peripheral hospitals for a long time just because just they can get a work permit or they can just stay there for a year. Just so sometimes you have to, I think, step out of your comfort zone and you have to make some difficult decisions in your life to achieve something. And then the satellite hospitals, as I elaborated uh, in the previous slide, if you're finding harder to get in the bigger hospital, you can get into the smaller hospitals attached to these bigger hospitals and then make your way into these hospitals. And lastly, I think the, the pediatric rotation is the most difficult to get at this time. It's very competitive and most of the non-EU trainings, uh, be, people were uh, uh, trying to achieve the specialist registration through uh, parallel scheme. They're finding it hard to get the pediatric rotation. So th the current standard of most pediatric hospital is that most pediatric hospital like Temple Street and Crumlin would, if they, uh, if they have seats, uh, they would rather prefer to have people who have already done their senior reg on call. That's not something documented, but this is something that they expect of people. So I think that people should always try to get into the periodic hospital after their final fellowship. There's no harm applying. And if you can get into the children's hospital and get your periodic rotation signed off, there's nothing like that because I think peace is a bit hard to get. Uh, this is something I just wanted to say, a little experience uh, of mine. So there are forums that are available to help. So uh, IPPA is one of the forums and, uh, and they're often conducting webinars, seminars, and they have this uh, mentor program where people are available to seek help. Uh, there's also, for the last two years, there's an NSAID group for uh, NCHDs, which was um, now they have a rep representative in the college uh, in, you know, so Dr. Sham look after the representative uh, of NSAT group and they have meetings and communication. So there's plenty of help available, I would say. Uh, and in the last, I just want to say that success doesn't just find you, you have to go out and get it. It's difficult, but it's doable, I would say. Uh, but people have their individual experiences. And I think, you know, uh, whatever way you achieve it, I think you just have to be very steadfast on that path. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vakas. That was a brilliant, brilliant presentation. And a, a lot of very nice advice there as well. Um, I mean, exactly. Success doesn't find you. You need to strive. You need to struggle. And that, that is essentially the same, whether it is physiology, emergency medicine, internal medicine, or anything else at all, really, that you need to put some effort in. Nothing is going to come finding you. So the next speaker that we have is Dr. Abdullah Abu Khaliga. Uh, Abdullah is a wonderful person. Uh, he has been pottering around in emergency medicine, some other specialties, and then he decided that uh, he wanted to focus on physiology as a career pathway. And what's amazing about Abdullah is that 
being a non-European passport holder, he got on to the run-through specialist training scheme in anesthesiology, which in all fairness is really, really, really hard to get on. So one, Abdullah, we are all proud of you. Two, we would like to learn from your experience that how and what, if, if I am a new SHO and I want to, you know, take on anesthesiology as a career going forward, what should I do? Abdullah, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here. Uh, I have, my talk isn't very long, it's a pretty short talk, uh, hopefully sweet. Um, I just have a few tips to try and maximize your chances um, of getting on right through training if that's what you want to go, uh, go for. So I just, I thought it would be um, the most useful to just show you a screen share of the website and different links that would be useful. Um, so first of all, here are the anesthesia training website. So if you go to anesthesia.ie slash training, um, the, the, what I'm hovering over with my button here is how we access the application of the training program. Um, just being conscious of time, I'm not gonna go through the entire um, application process. You can go through everything that's on the website uh, yourselves. Um, there are many sections or documents on everything from instructions to apply. So this document details everything you need uh, and how to apply. Um, this next document has frequently asked questions and they're all on that main page I mentioned. But I wanna draw particular attention to this document and this detail here. So up until last year, as you all know, um, priority when allocating training posts was given to people who were either Irish, Irish or EU. Um, and what that meant was, let's say for example, on any given year, there are 40 spaces on a training scheme uh, and there were more than 40 EU applicants. Um, the, you know, the best 40 EU applicants are going to get those posts. So it doesn't matter how well you do in your application or your um, interview, you will not get one of those posts if, if there are more EU applicants. Let's say there are 40 places and there happen to be 35 applicants, then you need to be one of the best five non EU. Um, and I believe every single year there are always more EU applicants than, than spaces. Um, so last year they introduced, well, this year, this, this was the very first year with, where they're counting people who have a stamp for immigration status. Um, as equivalent, so um, you'd have an equal footing. Um, and up until this year, you had to have five years working in Ireland with a work permit to qualify for a stamp for. So that's the basis on which I got my stamp for. Um, starting this year, 8th of March, uh, you doctors now qualify after only two years. So the most important point that I can make during my entire talk is get your stamp for. That's what's going to give you an equal footing without other applicants. Um, it doesn't mean you automatically get on the scheme. You'll still need to compete with all these other people. Um, and then it's in order of merit, but that's what's going to give you an equal footing. So I can't stress enough, put in your calendar the exact date that you qualify and apply immediately, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing, I just wanted to go briefly through the... Um, marking scheme. So this again, this the, the college is quite transparent. They have this on their website and it's all within the documents that are on this page. So you just click on these tabs and download all those documents and go through them. Um, applications open up usually in November of every year. They, they did this year and they last for, for the month. So make sure your application is in before then. So this marking scheme goes through, so it's, it's points based system, right? So it's out of 100 total. Um, 35 are allocated to the application itself, and then um, 65, so the majority is interview. Now, those initial 35 points are what's gonna get you an interview, okay? So um, many of these, these things would already be set and done. So you've all graduated medicine, you can't change how many points you get here, but there are certain things that you may be able to change before the time you apply to just maximize your chance of getting that interview. So if you have a membership, if you've done any sort of exams, uh, that counts towards um, towards the points of this section. So you can get a maximum of five marks. If you've done an MBA, PhD, 
if you've done a BSc in another in another um, specialty, that counts as well. Then you have this section where any anesthesiology posts would um, would contribute towards points. Um, so make sure that you put all of these things in your application. Um, you may already be set for a post uh, for the next uh, twelve months or six months until you apply again. But if not, you know you can get the next six months in anesthesiology. Um, a section that you can probably uh, add marks to uh, now still is this section here, so your academic achievement. So many of you might have already done audits, presentations, publications. Um, our annual Congress uh, of Anesthesiology here in Ireland is considered an, an international meeting. So you can get quite a few points for that. And if you go to the college website here, you can see that you still have nine days to submit something. So you might already have an audit, you might already have a presentation that's worth talking about. Make a poster and submit it. Very well, may get accepted, you may get the, the points for it. And um, so that's this section. So you go through, you know, those 35 um, marks and, you know, try to maximize whatever you can maximize between now and applying. Um, but as you can see, most marks um, come from the interview. So once you've uh, secured an interview, uh, it's really important to perform well in the interview section. And um, I think it's very useful, just speak to whatever hospital you're in, speak to people who are already on the scheme, speak to your um, supervisors, speak to the college tutors and get tips from them. I'm not gonna go through kind of interview details, but one thing I can stress as, someone who has a mixed um, background of specialties, uh, you do not need to have a 100% anesthesiology background to be considered for the scheme. Um, yes, if you happen to have done the anesthesiology uh, internship and then done anesthesiology jobs and then uh, exams, it's clear, you know, your commitment to the specialty is clear and you still are not excluded though, just because you've done other specialties I've done quite a few. Um, it's just really important to, for it to come across that you are passionate about anesthesiology. Uh, I believe any of us who are applying for the specialty would um, be passionate, um, but that just needs to come across. It needs to come across that you're not settling for anesthesiology. You know, It needs to be something that you're passionate about, that needs to be clear. Um, you can always, all of us have a story as to how we came to love anesthesiology and just make sure that you you um, you communicate that properly. Uh, and there's no job, I do not believe that there's any such thing as wasted time. Whatever job you've done, you've gained something from. Um, and you can communicate how that led to your story of, of uh, loving anesthesiology. I think in terms, in interest of time, we've already hit the question, the question and answer section. I'm, I'm over by three minutes. So thanks for listening. And um, if I happen to be in a, in a hospital you're working in, come approach me, I'll be happy to talk to you. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you send uh, my way here. Thanks guys. Uh, thanks Abdullah. Uh, thanks for the lovely presentation. And on the behalf of uh, IPA, I want to thank uh, Dr. Ith Shamsan, Dr. Vakas Rahman, Dr. Abdullah Abu Haliga, not only these, uh, my IT gurus, which is Dr. Mr. Zubair Siddiqui and Mr. Khalid Abbas, who were kind enough and giving all the support that we are able to run this uh, webinar on the IPA. And also, uh, thanks to uh, Mustafa. So uh, there will be a couple of questions which came and we try to answer because uh, time is uh, you know 10 minutes left uh, for, the, for the webinar. And first of all, uh, as I said, uh, I know Dr. Visham for a long time, we came to Ireland, I'm here 26 years. And uh, when you work in the hospital, if you work hard, that, that will pay you back. If you make a good relation with the mentors, mentees, uh, that's why this, uh, the IPA platform is we want to develop the mentors, mentee relationship. I gone through the experience, personally started as supernumerary in 96 for one year because I was passion, come to the anesthesia, and now, alhamdulillah, I'm here. So, but every hospital you work there, you can't get along very well with everyone, but you want to leave the impression you are clean, you are hardworking and dedicated. 
want somebody available pick the people which you make a good rapport talk to them tell your plans they will look at closely how you improve it and listen clearly and then success is yours the consultant consultant doesn't want anything else because they already gone to that level but only you guys are there that will make a difference you are the future consultants you are the future uh, you know representation of the anesthesiology and that's my advice you know now the first open question is uh, came from uh, one of the participant uh, i think i understood that it sham elaborated very clearly question was that if you're working in a, you know purely as a fellowship in obstetrics stand alone hospital uh, and during the fellowship if, if that on call will be counted as third on call uh i will leave to the expert but uh, what i understood from dr shyam uh, lovely presentation that there should be you are supervising two people and there should be two consultant on call uh, icu or icu obstetrics or a general uh, consultant on call and uh, icu please i leave to open dr shyam if you want to mention yes uh oftar you have right, rightly said um uh, obstetrics uh, when you are working you may be supervising one uh, doctor there and idea as mentioned sometime things are not very clear it's not only two doctors you are supervising and covering idea behind doing a senior registrar call is what we are expecting when you will be on call as a consultant at that time you will be looking after obstetrics intensive care medicine and anesthesia itself a lot of things so if you are purely doing an obstetric hospital you are not getting that experience of intensive care where you will be admitting patients managing patients in intensive care or anesthesia itself in general theater or looking after patients in the accident emergency so idea behind senior registrar is you are covering multiple areas that are related to anesthesiology whether in intensive care obstetrics accident emergency so things like that and anesthesia itself as well so that's why it doesn't cover similar thing is like say peds as well pediatrics Uh, where doctors go and work for six months in pediatrics anesthesia as well, that is not counted towards their uh, third on call because they are doing some very specific speciality there. So that's answer to that question is. I know. Thank you very much. And other is uh, interesting question. I think is very relevant. And uh, question is, if someone has worked for four years in Ireland as a registrar in CV and done the MTAI and SPAI. can they apply for training and will college exempt any years in sat training okay uh, not as a sat training i think it's a different thing they are asking i'm a sat training scheme is the college training scheme if you have done four years in anesthesia have done your exam you can apply any time but you are deficient two years now because we would like six years now one year if you are coming from any middle eastern countries or subcontinent and have you got your, your european diploma or pakistani fellowship or uh, caribbean exam so the college will give you one year exemption uh, provided that hospital is a training hospital in that relevant country and you get a structured reference so that's only recently we started since last year to give one year exemption but that has to be uh, in a recognized training hospital thanks dr sham very clear question for abdullah and i hope abdullah will answer otherwise i have to answer <laughs> and abdullah do exam in other specialties and does it count in an cgsa sat the yeah, unmute please here yeah. yeah, yeah, I, 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 um, yeah so to my knowledge if you if you look at the uh, the points document that i showed you so you do get points uh, towards the scheme application if you've completed a bst in another specialty um but to my knowledge an exam in a separate specialty doesn't uh, give you points i can have a look through it now um but i don't think you get points for an exam in another specialty let me see that here uh, i think it, it, it can be checked but on the other hand uh, for the if you have done anything i think it, maybe not the point system but it will be enhancing your cv that you have done thing of course it absolutely be, yes, uh, yes. any any function. yeah of course that's correct yes um but here it says if you get a if you have uh, any membership of any other specialty you do get two marks towards your application um so it does help and as as professor uh, mukhtar said uh, it does make you more attractive 
as as abdullah you were attractive to us you know thank you <laughs> and yeah is open to the forum if they want any other questions uh, uh, i think dr mukhtar there is yeah, one please. question uh, sent please, to me directly again give, give me one please go ahead yeah yeah it's a structured reference form does it need to be sealed and stamped from outside is it essential yes it is it is uh uh you have to send it uh, uh it has to be sealed and stamped and send it to the um, medical council we just want it because uh, the candidate himself hasn't done that so it has to be uh, sealed and send it to the medical council uh thanks dr sham because uh, our colleagues uh, as said in, in the uh, ipa executive committee uh, mr zubair and mr khalid bas they are almost doctors they help so much for our webinar you know so they can understand even the questions and answer you know so they, were, they can yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine because that uh, for instance if you are in a hospital you get it signed from your consultant he can sign it and then seal it and give it to you and you can keep it with you and when the whole pack goes on at the end of your 6 years so that that should a company but it has to be sealed thanks dr sham uh, i think personally as i said uh, sorry i should be from sir another question came before i want to say anything and uh, structured reference from form should be from third on call onwards or right from the first hospital no no it is every hospital that you are sending or you want that hospital to be considered so it could be any year of your but there is a bit of a difference between the first 3 years and the second 3 years uh the way the question has been structured we are asking the assessors whether that candidate is eligible to go on to a special register so that sometime at your initial stage of your training may not be relevant so the the structured reference the consultant can skip that point it is relevant it is for the first first second or third year of their training so um, you need to have a reference from your start till the end so it's not only for the after the fellowship uh thanks dr sham so uh, we are almost uh, close to the finishing time and if there is no more question uh, we are sharing the link for the ipa is there is uh, there's another question if any if any pg from pakistan has come to ireland after i don't know imm for two years training via cpsp would his rh training be deducted from six years yes uh, one year uh, max maximum one year uh, could be considered towards your training and um, yeah okay Uh, one thing is the, yeah 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 so one year small things which is uh, not part of the is like uh, i know whether uh, any of the um, listeners here or participants of this there are few candidates who are working in ireland and unfortunately they were not able to clear their uh, fellowship and they have exhausted their six attempts i'm not sure whether they are here or not uh to answer to them is uh, answer to them is they can go and do the uh, english fellowship and uh, so they can come from that route because we only look for an exam and that doesn't go down in their application because you have failed irish exam or you have failed english exam any exam is considered and we don't look into from where that exam is done as long as any of those five six exam which i have mentioned is there uh thanks if has a structured form should be from the tutor only or other consultant it's uh, uh, it can be from any uh, consultant but uh, i think uh, in the recent uh, past we have seen few um, references coming up which uh, the um, what i could say the modules were ticked and they were not done so it is preferred if it's done by the lead of that hospital or at least tutor it's preferred because we will go into because sometime uh, like for instance cardiac anesthesia somebody has done in a hospital where when we looked into the number of procedures they have done or the number of cases were 
and they have taken two weeks off during that. Uh, so we do go into very much detail. So just an advice to those doctors applying, make sure you cover all those areas. If you took a month in cardiac anesthesia and you are off for two weeks, so that doesn't count into, even though sometimes the consultants do sign you off, but we do go into detail and look into, same thing goes with PEDS and obstetrics. And so that's not looking good and we will ask you to do that module. But um, so that's one thing. Thanks. And someone asked, uh, if I finish my training in Egypt and I got structured reference report, sorry, the question is disappear. Or... I Sorry, no. Egypt and I got structure reference report, but I, I didn't have European diploma. Say it again. I, so the question was not complete there. If I finish my training in Egypt and I got structure reference report, but uh, I don't have the European diploma. I don't know what the question they want to uh, ask. The next part of that question is as I came to Ireland with MCAI. Okay. okay. Once you have got your MCAI, and uh, so that could be considered you can you have to apply and when it come we have to see whether that hospital where you have worked it's a training hospital and while you were doing you were part of the egyptian training structure or if that's the case we will look into uh depending upon the strength of the references and the hospital we do consider that uh, Thank you. Uh, Dr. I have a direct question, actually. Uh, it says that professionalism workshop, if not able to get through CAI, CAI yeah. other instructions that will be uh, recognized? Uh, the thing is, up till uh, for the last two years, when the this COVID pandemic was there, so we did allow a few things uh, because of this. But we would like uh, this courses to be, the, these uh, professionalism courses to be done in Ireland because there are a lot of um, seats available. So there is, shouldn't be any reason why these professionalism. And also another thing is we are not saying England or Australia or Canada where these courses are done. We don't know what the content of their, those professionalism courses are. So, so that's the reason you can send it. Sometime we do look into these things, but we will prefer these courses are done in Ireland just because we know yeah. the content. Thanks, Dr. Sham. You're quite popular. People are asking so many questions. And one that's thing fine, I will tell fine. you is because we, we can't carry on uh, for, for a long time. You know, already meeting is overrunning. But uh, uh, before I ask the next question, if everyone can see it, we have the email, we have the social links, all those one. Uh, this recording will be available on our YouTube channel. This will be available on our website. But if you have more questions, please email on the on our you know official info at ipaisland.ie. We are happy, and our panel is happy to answer those questions there. So next question: How important important is the logbook? And uh, it is and important. Audit. Yes, it is. And uh, as I have mentioned, when your logbook goes to the assessor, which we send to, he look looks into. As I've just mentioned, somebody says they have the cardiac module and the. Uh, assessor will go into and look into you have set a cardiac module and the number of cases done and as i've mentioned now recently the e-curriculum or the new curriculum have come into and everything is numbered you have to do certain number of center lines you have to do certain numbers of awake fiber optic you have to do certain number of things so i think you need to uh, logbook is very very important and recently if you can get now the college has allowed the candidates to go uh, for first year, it's free to go and have the college e-portfolio and record things there. And after that, there'll be a small charge, but uh, you can go and you uh, need to record the, all your, whatever you're doing, so it becomes a logbook there, but it is important. Thank you. My question is, if you have done two years CPSP, HSC scheme, and that was on the college scheme, what college will consider them? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, that is considered as whatever you worked in Ireland, that will get considered. Okay. And, okay, another, we have filled our old log. One book. more thing, uh, uh, I think it's uh, also uh, at this point, as doctors mentioned, two years, college training program is six years, and we would expect somebody to complete the training in eight years. 
So if somebody say, for instance, was here in 2012, and now apply, I have done two years. So just to make sure, whatever experience they are bringing from Ireland or abroad, it's not, it's within that eight, nine year period, because we don't want somebody who has done their training or requirements in 2000 or something, we would expect in a very recent time that training has been completed. Well, that's very logical. And one question I uh, already mentioned is Zafar Khan asking, sorry for uh, college considered two years or one year, it was one year was exemption, whatever you did it. Only one and, year? Yeah. It's only one year is exemption. And it was a very hard battle to even get that exemption. And the reason for that is it's very hard to know uh, the hospital where the doctors are working, whether the, 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 the quality of training. And, but I fought really hard for that. And it's, uh, we have got one year exemption for out of Ireland because we do allow to come and give FCAI and FCAI to do an FCAI, you have to have three years under your belt. So on that, I, we fought and we got a year's exemption. That's max at, for the time being. Thank you. And uh, I think I, I will take it as a last question. And we have filled our old logbooks and all this new e-portfolio. They're asking about a new e-logbook. Can we submit the, our old logbooks, uh, people who prepared the old logbooks? Yes, you can. As I, I, yes, it will be considered. As I've said, we are just in the, it's, it's in the transition process. And even for the college SAT trainees, we are giving some leeway, but by next year, it will be very strictly on that. So there is, if somebody is applying in 2000 this year, uh, we will take those um, log books. Okay. And uh, there's one question about the audits are mandatory. I think Dr. Shah mentioned clearly, uh, if you follow the, maybe somebody joined late, but if you look at the Dr. Shah's talk, it will be, recording will be available. All the, uh, what is essential, what are the, you know, mandatory or optional, all explained very well. So, we answered almost all the questions and uh, the last thing on the behalf of uh, IPA and especially IPA Med, I want to thank for, to Dr. Isham Khan, uh, Dr. Bokas Rahman, uh, Dr. Abdullah Abu Haliza, and my great IT support, Mr. Zubair Siddiqui and Mr. Khalid Abbas. So thanks everyone, have a lovely afternoon and enjoy the day. Thank you, thank you.